we have I have I we have identified as a subject to to develop today and the next days of this week. But I would like to tell you what was the result of your of your um, they have now to find the results, but I remember that the first one, it was in response, what is your worry of, the, of September after, after holidays? And it was the, would you like to know what? Returning to the office. So you are highly, highly preoccupied by this returning heart. It's not only the fact to return, but all aspects linked with this returning to the work, to the office, not to the work, because you work all the time. We already got the time. Then it was the second, Lena, do you remind? It was to be fixed a desk yeah. and to perform a changing of job and place. So in accordance with this, we have prepared the session which will allow you to cope with this changing and return to the office. Then you had the second question. It was highly, highly responded with workload. Workload was really, really very, very um, Pro, that this it was the really the highest I will tell you how much workload it was for 54 and eight percent as for example um, professional reaching uh, re reaching a professional objective it was 21 and working with others only 18 this is you can see how you are really affected by I mean, preoccupied by, by, by workload. Then we had what feeling are present that we have eliminated when faced with the challenges. And it was the fear and anxiety, anxiety. And um, after this, it was the frustration, huh? frustration and sadness. So this is three of, the, of, of others that you have quoted the most the most uh, preoccupied. And then you had, what skills do you think you need to improve? And the first of skills, it was what? Relaxation. Mm -hmm. Relaxation, so you need to be relaxed. And then concentration, communication, and motivation. So that's why we have decided today the first session, it will be focused on how to cope with change, changing environment physically, huh? physicality with your physicality. And the second session will be with the concentration and, and others aspect of uh, this session. So I'm happy to tell you that uh, Leonard worked hardly and he is always busy he works very very hard so i would like to ask him how are you lena today because you have right also to be tired to have to need some relaxation <laughs> yeah that thank you Maria. that's a it's a very interesting question there's many ways to answer that question depending on who's in front of me and uh, but i'll answer it like this um i, I feel determined i feel motivated uh, I feel that I have um, to deliver in this hour and I have to um, help uh, people and uh, raise the awareness of, uh, of uh, the people that come and uh, to this session. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's um, the, uh, the feelings of fatigue and tiredness and, and uh, perhaps despondency are put to one side because I have a, a purpose. And uh, that's what we're going to be speaking about, perhaps in the fourth session, about our spirit and about our drive and desire. Um, the mental part of it comes into that as well. But today is the physical part. Um, um, Marie, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add before we, uh, before we continue. Hmm? Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we continue? No, I just would like to leave you the floor. Okay. And 
we are now with you all. Thank you very much to all participants to be with us. Thank you for, for your sincerity because you, you have shared with us you, your state of mind. Absolutely. And you're, now you are, you are ready to, to give us some exercises and... Right. Good and Fine. some uh, some some enthusiasm, some some spirit. Enthusiasm, yes. Okay. This is very very. We are looking very 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 highly. Okay. Very good. So everyone, uh, welcome, uh, welcome back. For those of us who were here, I think it was in June or May, uh, to create your comfort at work, how to cope with a changing environment, using our physicality, using the power of our concentration, and supportive relationships. Yeah. Um, we are going until 5.30. After 5.30, there's going to be a Q&A for those who wish to stay for 10 to 15 minutes max. And then we'll break until Wednesday, where we're going to um, go again at 4.30 until 5.45. Um, a bit of housekeeping now. Um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, on the top right-hand corner, you have the View button. If you click on that, you will have a drop-down menu of a speaker view, gallery view, immersive view. You can choose which one is more adaptable for you. It may change according to what we're doing. I'll be doing some exercises. I'll be showing you some exercises, and you can have a look at them. On the bottom left-hand corner, you have your, your microphone and your video button. I uh, encourage people to turn on your video. It's enough, okay? There's no more lockdown, but it's enough to uh, just hear a voice or you know have screens, for me at least, I just have screens with names and I'd love to see faces. I'd love to see how you are. I'd love to uh, put a, put a name, put a, put a face to the name. That's wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Uh, Eniel. Thank you, Linda, Nadia. Yes. Camelia. Okay. Wonderful. Super wonderful. Now we're living. Now we're living a little bit more and you can see each other as well and you can wave. Huh? You have uh, on the, on the, uh, the uh, bar on the bottom, you have reaction button here on the right hand side put up a reaction tell me how you feel tell me what you think also we have the chat more or less in the middle of the bar <coughs> excuse me we have a chat button and i'm going to ask it's very important i'm going to ask you certain questions and i'll say put it in the chat and just to show your response we can't speak at the same time unfortunately but put it in the chat and share your opinion share your honest uh, experience and so that makes the environment richer yeah. So we're really not just passively receiving things, we're interacting. And so we, re we remember perhaps things that uh, of the session later on, and then we can practice it if we wish, or be inspired to go out and search for our own remedies and solutions for our physical well-being. Okay, so I think that's about it, about the chat and the, the, the instruments there, the, um, the buttons. Okay, so um, speak your truth here, participate, engage at 100%. Share your ideas, raise your hands. Uh, the visuals have to be bigger as well, like a no is a big no and a, and a yes is a big yes, of course. Okay, fine. Don't be shy. My name is Leonard Luisi. I am a work performance facilitator. In everything I do for government structures and commercial companies, I help employees raise their standards in collaboration, communication, competence, and satisfaction at work. Um, this is the second time that we're doing this this year. The first time I think was in May. And oh, what a year it's been. How the world, our society is juggernauting in strange directions. Our ideas of what is safety, interaction, and freedom are shifting and moving in all kinds of directions. Yeah, we are changing our social habits, our social fabric. So we have new realities, we have new rules, we have new behaviors, we have new anxieties, yes or no. Raise a hand if you, if you agree on one of those points. Okay, wonderful. Um, so it's important uh, to know how do we cope? How do you cope? It's a good question. What is your coping strategy? What's making you succeed in what you do? And what's making you perhaps need more, have room for improvement? And what's missing, yeah? So all these questions are perhaps uncomfortable, but I believe that they're very important to ask, and I, and I think that uh, you deserve answers to. Um, how, to. How do I best resource my body, and my mind, and my emotions, and my humanity for that reason, for that, for that matter? And uh, how best can I uh, build my resilience and my autonomy and sense of freedom within the environment in which I am? Yeah. Um, 
The goals of these four sessions, as said before, um, is simply to practice and experience simple hacks, tips and tricks that can change our physical, our mental, our emotional, and our spiritual states while we're working. Yeah. And possibly change the way we think about ourselves, our energy, our resilience, and our self-image. It all boils down to that. So quickly, in the, we're going to do a quick poll now, a quick question. Uh, my question to you, you can write it in the chat, the answer in the chat. What inspired you? What motivated you to be here, to be present, to sacrifice your hour this evening uh, instead of go outside in the nice sunshine? What, what inspired you to come to this, to this training, to this session today? Write it in the chat. And I'm going to open up my chat and have a look. I'll read a few of them. I know that um, to get inspiration and tips. Okay, Christine, wonderful. Why else? What inspired you to come here? What was the motivating factor? Um, let's see. Okay, uh, excellent training. Okay, curiosity. I enjoyed the previous sessions. I want to get more of your energy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anxiety, feelings late. Okay, yeah, of course. Um, curiosity, helping myself. And the others, of course, when we do, when we help ourselves first, we can better help the others by our example. Looking forward to some solutions to remain positive, feeling of community in learning to get the out to get out the stress. Okay, so zipping by uh, my reputation. Okay, <laughs> well, I feel I feel, uh, I feel uh, uh, flattered. It was so inspiring the first session. I'm still in for the second part. Okay, finding new solutions, tips, burnout. Okay. Uh, Angela. So, okay. So some of us perhaps are experiencing um, a situation whereby we feel that we don't have any other choice. If you only have one solution, you don't have a choice. If you have two, you have a dilemma. You've got to make optionality. We've got to be able to create. We're creative beings. Create optionality. Give yourself at least three reasons or solutions that can move you out from the position you are in. Yeah. It's very important that we start thinking about it in, in, in more of a term of abundance rather than lack, loss, and, 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 and limits, yeah? Think of what, what's possible, of opportunities, okay? Curiosity, finding determination in times of high stress, okay? So we are experiencing high stress for different reasons, but all of them have some kind of underlining factor to it. Okay. Um, second question. What is the level of your physical well-being between one and 10? 10, of course, is over the moon. I have nothing to worry about. One is like, oh, you know, um, physically, physiologically, stomachache, perhaps not, not much sleep, um, not feeling too good, digestive problems, breathing problems. Where are you? Write that in the chat. And I'll pull up my chat again. Seven, seven, six, six, three. Okay um seven four well thank you for being honest huh? i mean just be give your honest wherever you are eight i practice yoga christina wow okay three maybe okay so my next question is what would make the difference say if i was at a three not feeling so good today at this present moment what would make what would be the difference that will bring me up to four or five we don't want to get to ten yet Four or five, where can I start? Where is the micro adjustment, the micro affirmation of myself as a person, my self-esteem and, and, and my direction of what I want to do for myself, my autonomy, my freedom? What can I do right now or after this session? Think about that and just write a little note for yourself. We're constantly making promises to ourselves. If we keep them, we have a lot of integrity and self-esteem. If we don't keep them, then we're betraying basically that part of ourselves. Yeah. Okay, digestive problems, but still 10. Uh, Dos Santos, one. Isabel, so Isabel, one. Okay, thank you for being honest. What would make that difference to bring you to two already now? What would it be? And is that factor something that you can control? If it's not, then refocus. Refocus on what you can control. I can't uh, leave this room, but I can open a window. Um, I can, I can make, I can make myself, a, you know, a cup of tea or, or some water. I can, I can make a meal for myself. I can make it nutritious. I can choose that. Yeah. Sense of purpose, uh, getting better home office equipment. Okay. Again, that's a resource outside of yourself. You can go and buy it yourself, of course, but you know, I guess perhaps you, you know, we're waiting for some kind of service from, from the institution, from the system. 
getting better in home office equipment, taking breaks uh, without bad conscience, of course. Very good. I can get in touch with some good old friends. Why not? Why not have some photos of friends that 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 uh, you you appreciate and love and have affinities with? Yeah. Motivation to go to the gym, better sleep, keep the promise of exercising. Yeah. Promise to yourself. Yeah. Uh, learn um, learn doing the same but with less stress. How do we do that? Very good. Very good um, points there. Um, last question. What physical change would you like to experience at the end of this hour? What physical change? If there was one, if you had Harry Potter's wand and you were able, able to flick the wand and make something happen to you that was within your power to do, what would it be? Let's have a look at the chat. Uh, feeling calmer and happier feeling lighter, relaxed shoulders, less headache. Yes, inner calm, lightness, feel more energetic and relaxed. Get the tightness out of my shoulders and neck. Feeling lightness, okay, feeling more mindful, feeling lightness, calmer. Wow, okay, so we're looking, so if I get, if I get the impression that we're feeling heavy. Okay, so first exercise, straight away, first exercise. Everyone stand up, please. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I can see you all. I can see through those cameras that are closed. About 50% of us. Come on. Come on. Okay. Now, put one hand on the belly, one hand on the sternum. Have the eyes on the horizon, meaning lift your head slightly so you're not looking at the screen, but you have your eyes looking straight forward in front of you on a level. Yeah? And then lift your sternum. Breathe in and lift your sternum. And imagine that you're feeling lighter. Lift your waist. Lift out of the floor as if your skin is just going upwards. Yeah. And then relax. And just relax. Okay. One more time. One more time. Let it go. Let it go. Let it, shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Okay. Once more. Hand on the belly. Hand on the sternum. Lift the sternum. This is where your pride is. This is where your integrity is. This is the, uh, um, there's a gland behind your sternum here, which is uh, um, correlated with youth. And, and, and spirit, lift that, lift that part of you. Your heart is there as well, yeah? And feel that lightness in your body. Let it really go, go all the way down to your legs. Lift the body, just the spirit, the skin, yeah? And close your eyes, the eyes on the level, and imagine you're in a space and in an environment where there's full of appreciation and gener generosity, yeah? Here we're doing a really... Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't call it hypnotic, but it's a, it's a envisioning. Yeah, we're 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 creating a little vision board for ourselves and imagining these things, with with the physicality to it as well. Okay, great. Let that go. Let that go, and we will continue. I have to tell you, you can sit down again. Sit down in a, in a dignified position. How about that? Sit down on the edge of your chair without using the back of your chair. Yeah, we'll go into the cognitive dissonance in a little bit in a little bit later. Um, disclaimer. Full disclaimer. Create your comfort at work is not about being comfortable. It is not about being comfortable. It's about moving out of your comfort zone. It's about expanding your comfort zone. It's about expanding your awareness and expanding your identity. It has nothing to do about sitting still, being static, and waiting for something to arrive that, that, that will help you. It's about you feeling resourceful, you feeling that you have the power to make it and to influence yourself to do, to take a step towards going in the right direction. That's all it is. We're not talking about arriving at the goal. We're talking about moving in that direction. Yeah. It's about recognizing your power, your power. What is power? Your power is your ability to act, your ability to, to be proactive, to do something for yourself. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you take the exercises from today or take your own exercises or find other exercises that you're interested in or go and practice the sport that you used to practice before or do something for yourself that's going to really uplift you and make you feel that you have this sense of autonomy, a sense of freedom and a sense of power, the ability to act. OK, the paradox of energy is that if you want more energy, you have to spend more energy. If you want something that you you, for example, you want to buy something, or you have to spend energy, time, focus, you have to uh, spend effort to get it. So energy is the same thing. If you want more, you have to spend more. 
Um, and I think that's a very important, um, for me at least, distinction. It's not something where you get from, from perhaps you can get from food, of course, but it doesn't necessarily fulfill you. Yeah, it can do, it can do. I'm not saying it doesn't. But uh, really, when we want something, when we feel despondent, when we feel perhaps we don't have enough of something, put more energy there. If you want a better relationship with your colleagues or with, 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 your, with your family members, put more relationship, put more time, put more positive intentions there and you'll get back. Whatever you give, you get back. Yeah? We'll be exploring more of ourselves during this journey, our habit nature, where we are now, and our, and our default pattern and where you want to go. And we're going to try, try and close that gap. Yeah, Try and close the gap. So we're going to better harness our energy on all those four levels, physically, with our bodies, with our breathing, with our physiology, mentally, through our appreciation of our focus and concentration, emotionally, through creating our ability to create supportive relationships and with others and with ourselves. Yeah? The first relationship you have is with you. Yeah? So how is that? That's the questions we'll be asking. And of course, our spirit, our desire, our gratitude, and our persistence to go in the direction that we choose. Yeah. Okay, so today is focused on physicality. Um, let me remind you of what I do so that perhaps um, um, people perhaps are asking themselves, about who I am and what I do. Um, I've told you that I'm a trainer, I'm a work performance facilitator. I was a former kinesiologist. I still practice kinesiology, which is stress management through um, biofeedback monitoring. Yeah, And uh, I was a former dancer uh, for 20 years um, for classical ballet, classical ballet companies and modern dance companies in Holland, France, Belgium, and United States. Dancing gave me an understanding of the body in movement. It gave me an understanding of my own imagination and how powerful that is. Yeah. And the notion of continual self-improvement, always, always looking for ways to improve what you do, how you do it. Yeah. Uh, kinesiology was uh, a wonderful, wonderful technique that brings an awareness of one's emotions. It um, gives us a greater capacity to listen to ourselves and to build a connection and support other people in their journey, in their progression, their ev evolution, yeah? So um, another thing to understand here is that uh, although I'm, I have this experience and I have this uh, perhaps uh, credibility, uh, I'm also dealing with my vices and my inhibitions with the constraints of the times and, and what we're doing and how work has changed. I'm not by, by any, um, um, you know, example, the, um, the person who's leading this, this, this meeting today, I'm like you, I'm struggling with certain things and certain things I have easier. Yeah, like everyone, everyone has their forte and everyone has their, their um, uh, a weak, weak link. So I'm just like you. And the other thing I'd like to um, mention to you that uh, there is, um, it's not just what we do, it's how we do what we do. The how is perhaps just as valid as the what. It's the quality of what we do when we do what we do. It's our intention. It's the hidden formula in how we get it right or get it wrong. Yeah. It's being present. It's being mindful. It's about the way we approach an activity or exercise. Oh, God, I have to do this again. Oh, oh. Or, oh, God, not again. Or, I'm so bad. I'm so not good at this. I'll never get it right. Or, um, um, you know, the others are better than me or things like this, where we put ourselves down by the, by our internal dialogue. Yeah. So the how is very important. It's our awareness of our sensing feeling selves, not just our mental selves, but also this feeling that we are not just mental, but we are spiritual beings. We are, uh, you know, we are, we are a kinetic, kinetic beings as well. We move and we feel it's the meaning we give to what we're doing. It's our narrative. Yeah. It's either auto-supportive or auto-destructive. And it's for us to choose what it's going to be. Yeah? Even if we're not good at something for the moment, we can still support ourselves by encouraging ourselves with this internal dialogue. The how changes the effect of what we do and the quality of our results. Yeah? That's very important to, to believe, to, to hold on to, if we want to make advancements in, in, in starting something new, yeah? making new habits, for example. Last thing I want to leave you with is the same old formula that I use practically in every training that I give. Whatever we do, we practice and cultivate over time. Whatever we do, 
we practice and cultivate over time. And whatever we practice and cultivate over time, we get results, positive and negative results. So if, for example, my results are more negative than positive, oh, well, the responsibility is mine to go back and find out what is it that I'm practicing that's giving me these results. And how can I change, make tweaks, make micro adjustments or, you know, adjustments to what I'm doing so that I may have a better result than I have now. The burden of responsibility is ours. Gone are those days when we would, um, I guess in the 1970s, go to the doctor and say, oh, doctor, I got this problem. And the doctor would say, okay, don't worry, Leonard. Here, take, a, take this uh, little medication and go on your way. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Sometimes that works and it's called placebo. But gone are those days. We don't want to give out our responsibility so, so quickly. We want to take our responsibility back to us and find ways, yes, with the doctor, yes, with the professional, but find ways in our habit, in our, in our behavior, our daily behavior that's going to make a difference in our result. Yeah. So wherever your difficulty is, that's where your prize is. That's where your treasure is as well. Yeah. So we have to be uh, proactive about this. Um, this training therefore presumes that you have the capacity and you have the willingness to be self-aware, self to reflect about what you do, your behavior, and um, eventually to share your experiences when we go out into breakout rooms and the other sessions and to make changes in your behavior. If you have that, if you have the capacity and the willingness to do that, then you're on course. We just have to take the first step. Yeah. So let's uh, take that first step and check into our, put our brains into our bodies. Um, for those of us who took the session beforehand, perhaps you know this already. Raise your right hand. Okay, great. Everybody raise your right hand. Give me a four like this. Four, mm, four. There we go. Raise the left hand. And give me a two like this, index finger and thumb. Right. Now, after the count of three, this two becomes a four. And this four becomes a two. Ready? Brains to bodies. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I see a five, two, three. One, two, three. Maria, I'm, I'm glad that you're not my accountant. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Right. Okay. Now, I see lots of people smiling, those of us who have the cameras on. Were you thinking about the stress? Were you thinking about the, the meeting that you had or that you will have tomorrow? Were you like, uh, oh, my God, you know, my, my back is still hurting or, you know, I still have this problem, you know, work-life balance. I'm still um, anticipating and having anxiety about what's going to happen with um, work now. It happens here. It happens here. Stress is subjective. Stress is subjective. And it's not the environment necessarily. It's the way we receive the information. And just like um, our computers these days, we want to work with the best operating system, the best system that gives and receives information. Yeah. So just think of working with Windows 97. It was a good system. Huh? It's a great system and it still works now. It still works, but it's not up to date. It doesn't give and receive information like we expect it to. Why not us? Why not our central nervous system? Why not the way we perceive things and on a psychological way? Why can't we see the glass half full? Recognizing the glass is half full. Why can't we focus on that? Yeah. Why can't we empower ourselves to do something for ourselves? That's a good question. And all we need to do is change an algorithm. All we need to do is just get up and start. Okay. So this is what I want to inspire you to do, to, to have this experience of like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Okay. So let's take this bit. It's another exercise here. Have the hands behind the head like this. This is called a power pose. I mean, it's been coined a power pose now after Amy Cuddy from TEDx, you know, this uh, social researcher. Take a deep breath. Ah. Oh. Yes, this is called the um, director general pose. You know, give it a name for yourself. This is Leonard on, on the beach in, in Greece. Oh, <laughs> you know, imagine something for yourself. Give yourself those great endorph endorphins, those hormones. Yeah, that's where you are. That's where you are. Literally, that's where you are. Okay, 
Now everyone take their hands down, keep the spine up, head flies to the ceiling, spine follows, follows the skull, the sternum lifts. Yeah, keep that, keep that feeling that goes along with it. We associate good feelings with expansive positions in our body. And we associate bad feelings, <laughs> not so good feelings, with small positions. Even though we concentrate very well, we concentrate perhaps very well in positions like this. I call this the brontosaurus or the computersaurus. Yeah. We do that because we have the habit of school <laughs> and university where we're studying hard, we're reading very strongly, you know, we're getting all the information in, you know, and getting it out as well. And we're, and we're focusing and we work very well like this. However, for our bodies, it's not very productive. And we know that sitting is the next, it, it is, you know, the smoking of our generation. Sitting is the smoking of our generation. Perhaps tomorrow or to not, not tomorrow, Wednesday, when we come back together again, I'll try and get some PowerPoint presentations that I was doing in the past and that can show you some of the research that was done. Um, but it's the smoking. And so it's dangerous. So everyone stand up. Let's just uh, think about shaking our bodies up, shaking our bodies out. We need to stand up every 20 minutes, I believe the science is, uh, to uh, get our system working again. Otherwise, the metabolism slows down. It's very important to move. It's very important to uh, feel that uh, you are your body is invigorated. Okay, sit down again. <laughs> Great. Super. Great. I'm going to have to go through the exercises very quickly. This is called cognitive dissonance. This exercise is called cognitive dissonance, where we are in disaccord with our body, bodily position, our physical, our physicality, right? So here we go. Cross your legs, sit back in your chair. Give me that rounded back. Push the shoulders forward. Yeah, that's it. Push the, the, the sternum down, pull the head out a little bit like this, mm. frown the face a little bit, cross the arms, cross the legs. Mm. Yep. And then take a deep breath. How was that for you? Write it in the chat. How was that for you? And be honest, no difference for me, Leonard. Now, come back to this power position. Um, hands behind the head, elbows slightly to the side, opening the chest, sitting up in the chair, imagining those, those great things that you would imagine when, you do, when you're in this position, and take a deep breath. How much easier was that? Yeah, give me a sign or something. Put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So what are we finding out here? Can you be in this position and say, Leonard, I feel terrible. I feel depressed. Does that work? Do you believe yourself? And likewise, be like this and say, Leonard, you know, I feel absolutely wonderful. I really do. Yeah. So we want to have some kind of um, ability to influence our psyche. And there's no better way, from, from my point of view, than using the body itself. Put yourself in a position where you would feel normally happy and generous and, 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 uh, and, and joyful. Put yourself in a position that gives you that, that, that feeling. Yeah? And walk around like this or, or think about um, how difficult uh, a meeting would be like this. And I'm sure you'll find solutions. I'm sure you will start thinking positively if you, keep, if you maintain the position. A little tip, Amy Cuddy, Amy Cuddy, A-M-Y-C-U-D-D-Y, is the uh, social scientist. You can look her up on, on you, YouTube. Um, it was a TEDx um, emission. I think there's more of what she does as well. She's written a few books and uh, about how they studied animals. When animals want to reproduce, when they want to impose themselves, when they want the testosterone to flow, uh, the hormone of confidence, they put themselves in positions that, 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 in positions that give them that, that, that uh, help them, that are uh, supportive for those feelings. Yeah? It works both ways. It works both ways. Okay, very good. Another position that I want to share with you is this one. Put one hand on the shoulder and then one hand under the armpit there if you can. <sighs> Take a deep breath. 
sometimes we feel too excited, we feel too stressed, and we don't want to give ourselves or too angry, for example, or too frustrated. And giving ourselves more power, more testosterone, maybe is not the quite, quite the right solution. And we want to calm down. We want to feel that you know there is care, there is um, perhaps generosity, there's kindness. And um, this is a way of doing it. You, know? you can close your eyes, you can uh, put your chin, chin down if you wish. You can take a deep breath from the belly, allow the belly to balloon as you inhale and exhale. Allow the belly to recede. So you're in this position and you can infuse this position with kind thoughts, generous thoughts, um, sensing and feeling thoughts of, of positivity, positive ones, yeah? Sometimes we need this. A lot of you responded in the, in the um, survey that you want to relax, you wanna know how to relax. This is one way to do that. This is called the self-hug. You're muted, sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, Virginia Satir, the uh, psychologist, four hugs a day for survival, eight hugs a day for maintenance, and 12 hugs a day for thriving, for really exploring the world. Yeah. So I suggest if you don't have anyone to hug, you don't have an animal to look after or to caress, this is a good way of doing it. Yeah. Okay, we'll let that go, relax it all out, and let's go quickly into the exercises. Let's take a sip of water. Hydration is very important. Um, by the way, you can write in the chat while we're doing this. What are the signs of dehydration? What are the signs of dehydration for you personally? Not not the encyclopedia version. Not you know not Google, Wikipedia or whatever. What are your signs of dehydration? Headache, headaches, fatigue, headaches, hunger. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about hunger. There's something in the brain that that uh, fools us sometimes. We have to really Drink first and then eat later, perhaps. Fatigue, painful kidneys. Oh, okay. Be careful about that. Take, take care for your, of yourself. Yeah. Uh, false sense of hunger. Yes, indeed. Avoid headaches, uh, dry lips, heaviness. What else? What else can it be? What about the eyes? Hmm? What about the humor? Mm. Oh, God. Work again, heaviness. Dry eyes. Okay. Stefania. Um, what about um, how much water should we drink a day? Yeah. What is, you know, what is uh, three liters? Wow. Good for two liters, eight glasses, 1.5, two. Okay. My next question to you is, do you do that? Do you, <laughs> do you drink that? No, no, no <laughs> nope. Yes. Very good. Uh, Valerie. Oh, no, no. It's uh, uh, Tula. Yes. Yes. Two liters, fantastic. Uh, no, tea and coffee do not count. They are they dehydrate unless it's tisane or you know sort of herbal teas. I don't know. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. If you don't measure your finances, you can't manage it. If you don't measure your time, you can't manage it. Manage it. Measure it. Yeah. And there's lots of benefits of drinking water and you know spicing it up for yourself. Give yourself that that um, possibility. Yeah. Okay, that's just a tip. Hydration tip. Okay. So um, I'm gonna take another drink. Have a look at this. Just gonna put on my brightness here. Okay, I wanna get myself, see myself. Go. Um, I can't see myself. Gallery view. Okay, welcome to my abode. Have a look at this. Let's see, can you see me? All right, here we go. Have a look at this. Write in the chat what you think. Leonard looks ridiculous. 
Then it's having fun. I wish I was having fun. Yeah, but Leonard's a dancer. What do you say? Lovely bird. Wonderful. This is called the condor. Swan Lake. Okay, great. <laughs> Helen. <laughs> Fluid. Flying. Relaxing. What impression does it give you? That's the, that's the real question. I do it a few times a day. Breathing. Light. Ready to take off. Flying. Lightness. Lightness. We're looking for lightness. Yes or no? Have you ever seen a depressed person lift their arms up and down like that? Huh? That's why people in the days would go to concerts and, and whatever, see art, because it's uplifting. Yeah, It uplifts our being. Yeah, Balance, beautiful happiness. Okay, everyone stand up, please. Let's do this together. Wow, time is whizzing by. Okay. But each exercise is actually very good. Okay, all together and lifting the arms, lift the sternum, lift the rib cage, and allow the arms to float down as if you're in water. Ah, and then lift again. My arms are by my ears in that horizontal plane. Yeah, sorry, a frontal plane. Yeah. yeah. And again, lifting the arms up and opening the armpits. Ah. One last time, breathing in. Breathing out. Eyes on the horizon, breathing in. Breathing out. Ah, very good. Okay. Write in the chat how you're feeling. How are you feeling now compared to a few minutes ago? What's happening with you? Better. Okay. I often do this. Fantastic. Wonderful. Better, relaxed, lighter, more free. Uh, yawning. Great. Like a ballerina. Why not? Uh, lighter, refreshed, warmer, light, hungry. Okay. <laughs> In a few minutes, you can eat something. More energy. Okay. Yeah. We're giving ourselves the possibility to move. Um, so movement is very important. And to, and to do something good for ourselves. And imagine, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the faculties that we've outsourced to television, to computers, to online programs, to Game, gaming or something, we've outsourced this capacity to imagine, to see things with color, bright in our eyes, to desire things that are, that are part of our imagination. We've lost this from, from childhood, but it's time to get it back. It's time to bring it back in yeah, and start doing that where we'll so happily sit in front of a TV, Netflix, and, and see a wonderful documentary that's inspiring for us. Okay, fine. But can we do it ourselves? Can we inspire ourselves? Because when this breaks down, when, when something happens, when there's a, a lockdown or another, some, some other kind of uh, uh, social uh, up, um, a crisis, how do we deal with it? How do we remain autonomous? How do we keep our, our, this sense of freedom? Yeah, very important. For me, these questions are important. Okay, very good. We're going to do another exercise. It's called the squat. Okay, it's uh, par excellence. It's one of the you know personal trainers' favorite exercises because it works all the muscles of the body. And I have a chair there waiting for me. Hopefully, you can see that. Let's see, I can't see myself. Okay, yes. All right, all right. Okay, good. So I'm not sitting back in my chair. I'm sitting up. I have a self-supporting spine, which means I'm sitting right on my six bones. And my spine is long. It's not straight. It's not contorted. It's long. It's lifted. It's light. Head flies to the ceiling. The spine follows the skull. And the, and the shoulders drop and follow. Yeah? I'm sitting like this. And I'm going to bring my head forwards in space. But with my back, is very straight. I'm not curving my spine to go over. But I'm keeping the spine very long. and taking the whole thing forward. And I'm going up onto my feet. And I'm touching the back of the chair. And then I stand up. I can have that hands in front if I wish, or have the hands down. And then when I sit down, I want to feel the chair first and then slowly lower my buttocks and sit down. Yeah. This is the sitting squat. This is the desk squat. So here we go. Moving forward. One, two, back again. Three, bending in the hips. Three, and then lowering the buttocks. Four. Be careful if you have uh, wheels under your chair. Uh, you don't want to go back. You want to cause an accident. Okay. One more time. And breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. 
Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, and low. Yeah. Okay, great. Write in the chat how that was for you. How did you experience that? Be honest. Start with honesty. Maybe it's not your exercise. Maybe you, you feel perhaps um, that there is some kind of aching or pain in your body when you do it. Be honest. Start with honesty. Okay. A bit unnatural. New. Okay. A bit unnatural. Yeah, it's not natural. <laughs> well, we, uh, we've come a long way from, from our, our uh, natural habitat. Yeah. We're... You know, we're sitting down, we have uh, ergonomic chairs to support our backs, but we don't use the muscles in our body. And that's the thing. Our muscles are put out to, um, to uh, unemployment benefit or <laughs> on vacation all day long. And then when we do go shopping and lift the heavy uh, uh, bag of shopping, we, oh, something happened. I, I had a little difficulty there. I must have done a bad movement. There's no such thing as a bad movement. It's only the body that's not prepared to do it. You know? A bit too complex with the chair with wheels. Absolutely. Be very careful with that. You want to have a, a static chair. I don't do that sort of movement normally. I feel, feel it in my knees. Okay. Careful. It's, you know, it's something that you perhaps have to have someone guiding you through to be able to do it properly. But this exercise is very good because it works the triceps. Sorry, the, um, the, the quadriceps. <laughs> quadriceps. It works the gluteus maximus, which is the buttock muscle. It works the lower back and the upper back, and it works your spine. Yeah, if you keep your spine long and lifted, it's the squat. One last or two last exercises. This is called the teapot. I'm looking at the time. We have eight minutes left before Q and A. The teapot. So you can stand or you can sit. It doesn't really matter. The same initial position. You have to have a, um, a self-supporting spine. If I'm, if I'm used to sitting like this, this is going to feel uncomfortable for me. Yeah, naturally. If I'm standing a lot like this with my spine erect and everything, you know, feeling very tall, this is going to be uncomfortable for me. It's going to feel foreign. I won't have the habit. Oh, I don't like this position. Whatever we do, we practice. And whatever we practice and cultivate, we get results from. It may feel comfortable, but it's not giving us a good result. So it's up to us to change the structure or to change something about what we do to get a better result. Yeah. It's our responsibility again. Okay. So um, definitely it's something that we have to look at all the time. That's why, you know, personal trainers tell us, have been telling me, Leonard, it's the form. Keep your form. Like in yoga, you have to have a good form. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. It's called the teapot stretch. So you have the hands on the hips like this. You can sit or stand. Have one hand in the air. Let me see if I can move the camera back a little bit like this. Yep. Yeah. Breathing in and then pouring out. Breathing in and then changing hands. Ah. Oh. And then breathing in, tilting over to the side. The other hand is on the hip to support you, to give you a little bit of support. Yes, very good. And lifting up gradually, 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 gradually. And release. One last time. And breathing in. And imagine that your air is flying out there to the side. Hello. Yeah. And breathing in. And changing the arms. And breathing in. Always with this feeling of grace and generosity. Yeah. And breathing in and relax. Write in the chat how that was for you. Write in the chat how that was. This is called the teapot. The teapot stretch. Great stretch. Cool, stretching, relaxing. Yeah. What's the result? Does it feel better, worse? Not sure about the breathing. Okay, no problem. Breathing in. Breathing in. Better, energized, much better. Neck is now better. Fantastic. You did this. You, you made that happen. You turned up. Tightness gone. That happened to you because you were there. Yeah. Energizing better. Okay, great. The last one is the, um, the spiral, which is a very simple one. We've probably all seen it very before. Let's practice it, shall we? So I'll, I'll just be here with you. Imagine that you're sitting upright on the edge of your chair, not to fall over, feet on the, on the ground, flat on the ground, if you can, very stable. 
and lifted, like the, the, the exercise we did in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. You can look, yawn. Yeah, and it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Now we have our left hand, for example, on our right knee and the right hand in the back of the chair. And as we rotate the spine, we want to lift up that millimeter more. Breathing in. And then breathing out, coming back. Oh. Hands change over, right hand on the left knee, left hand in the back of the seat. Breathing in, allow the eyes to go to the back of the wall. And breathing out. Oh. One last time, both sides. Allow this to be gradual. We don't want to force this. We want to be, we want to be persistent yet gentle. Breathing in. And breathing out, spine is lifted. Yeah. Gradually rotate the shoulders, breathing in. And breathing out. Yeah. How was that for you? Write it in the chat. Tell me how you experienced that. Honestly, honest opinion. more flexible, simple exercises. That one I didn't get, no worries. I can explain it again or send me an email. <laughs> the back feels great. Conscious breathing makes a difference. Absolutely. Always with the breath. We protect our body with breathing. Yeah. And the way we use our breathing for these exercises in particular, we're not, we're not building muscle. We are invigorating our bodies. We're invigorating our central nervous system and our muscles. And we're asking our bodies, to, we're telling our bodies, hey, look, this, also, this is also good. This is also helping you. Yeah. And the body is accepting it because we're using our breath in a controlled way. Yeah. Okay. Left side is easy, right a bit blocked. I'm also one sided for certain mobility things. Um, so it's just a matter of being aware of that and then slowly working on the side that needs more help progressively until you're able to have both sides more or less equal. Yeah. Very easy to do. I mean, simple, simple uh, process application requires persistence. Okay. Why is movement so important? You can answer that question. Why is movement so important? Of course, the assumption in the question is movement is important. So you may say, well, Leonard, I don't think movement is important. That could be a point of view, but to enable energy to flow. Okay, what else? Otherwise, you would stagnate and ossify. <laughs> Great. We're built for moving, hunting, gathering, absolutely. Reproducing, climbing, shouting, screaming. We're hunter-gatherers and gatherer hunters. We have 360 joints, 207 bones, over 700 skeletal muscles. We're not meant for doing micro-movements all day long, <laughs> that's for sure. We're not built for that. We're built for dreaming. We're built for, for, for going beyond. We're built to be told that we're beautiful and that, that we deserve things. We're built to be autonomous and, and, and great people. Hmm? That's what we're built for. Muscle memory, absolutely. It's a great feeling to be, to, feel, to be fit, absolutely. The endorphins that you get from just going for a walk for like um, half an hour, you know, and you get to see the sky, see the trees. There's lots of other things we can go into that we don't really have much time to do. More energy. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do now is um, coming from um, um, Darwin, which is a form of shiatsu, where the shiatsu practitioner would perform this on themselves before seeing their clients or the people who needed help because they had to balance themselves first. Yeah, You ever heard that saying, You know, put the mask on yourself first? to avoid the burnout and then help other people. Yeah. It's very important that that philosophy in Tibet, in Tibetan philosophy, they would say, help everyone, yourself included. So if you, if you are, if you have less of a tendency to do that, then um, it's about time that we sort of reconfigure and download windows XP and or whatever mac os whatever it is and uh, and update that help yourself as well that's that's our power yeah okay so um here it is we rub our hands together 
so that it feels warm. Put some energy in it. I want some more energy, Leonard. I'm putting some more energy in my hands. Yes. Feel the warmth. Feel that. Feel that warmth. How does that feel? Yeah. Okay. Now, hands on the temple. Unless she's doing the exercise as well, I'm going to mute her. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, just um, make circles there. Yeah. Uh, and then we can press and make a circle. Press and make a circle. And breathe deeply as well. You may want to have your eyes on the horizon. Forget about the screen. Who's there? Then it's speaking. And just get into the sensing and feeling part of it. You, know, you may want to close your eyes. And go in the other direction as well. This is just a temple massage, okay? Very simple. I like going right to my hairline. Because that's why I get all these like ugh, nice little feelings of relaxation. Yeah. So press and um, stir, press and stir. Final malaxi, do ça. Okay. Great. Okay. Take a you know weigh up the difference. How does that feel? Okay. Rub the hands together again. Come on, Valerie. A bit more energy. Yes. Right. And then the jawbone. Now, you can't do it like this. You know, just have to relax the jaw. Yeah. This is when we're angry and frustrated and we don't want to express ourselves. We can do it like this. So it's very good to uh, massage this um, articulation, this joint, and the muscle associated with this. This muscle is the, um, I've got the name, but it's the strongest muscle in your body for its size. Yeah. I like going further back as well. It's sort of uncomfortable, but it, it's relieving the stress. Of course, what we're doing here, we are allowing blood to, uh, you know, flood this area. And then it also um, helps um, our st stress and tension that we have in our necks as well, because it's related. Okay. How does that feel? Just feel where that is. Next thing is the ears. And so let's take one ear at a time. I'm going to pull down my ear from the inside outwards, inside upwards, inside backwards. Just massage your ear. You might have some um, stiff points on the air. You know, oh, that feels very sore, very tight. Stay with it. There's over 200 acupressure, acupuncture points on the ears correlated with um, all kinds of functionings, uh, uh, physiological functionings and uh, physical functions of your body. Yeah. And so it's very good to do that. And on a traditional medicine level, medicinal level, we're just irrigating the, the blood that's flowing to the air and flowing to the, uh, to the brain. Yeah. So it's all good. It's all good for us. Breathe at the same time, breathe, make sure that you have good intentions huh? or good, good state of mind, state of spirit there. I'm doing something good for myself. It's unusual. It's new, but um, I'm 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 connecting to the sensation of it. Yeah. Let's try the other air. By the way, um, they say that um, in massage, they say that um, pain is sensation and the reaction to pull away. Pain is sensation and the reaction to pull away. So if you are able to control the action to pull away and lean in, it's just sensation. Yeah, it's interesting, I think. Okay, so how does that feel? This is very good for releasing tension in the, in the neck and releasing stress in general. If you're like me, my ears are warm. <laughs> I feel like they're warming up, okay? Good. So that's what we have. We have the ear massage. We have the jaw massage. We have the temple massage. We have the squat. We had the spiral. We had the teapot. And we had our power positions. We had this one. And we had this one. Yeah. So um, take this. I, you know, it's a suggestion. Take it. Do what you want with it. If you find that uh, you have affinities with certain exercises, let that inspire you to find more. Let that inspire you to practice something for yourself. Let that inspire you to move towards perhaps feeling better physically wherever you were, whichever number you were at in the beginning of the program. 
Um, and if none of them were inspiring, well, take the inspiration of what was being said, what was shared. Yeah. Um, again, you have the power to do things. You have the responsibility to do it as well. So it's it's up to it's up to you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, there you are. So it's up to you to uh, try and you know outweigh the the negative with the positive by what you practice on a daily basis. Good. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm staying for another 10 minutes for Q&A. If uh, people have questions to ask, uh, feel free to do that. I'm not quite sure of the number of people that will all have time to do it, but Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll also have uh, the occasion to do it. So if you have a question, write it down, send me an email if you need to, um, and we'll, we'll get to you um, soon. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your um, participation and your good spirit as well. It's a pleasure to... Uh, to, to demonstrate and, and to, to, to speak to you. And hopefully we'll see each other either, if not on Wednesday, another time soon. Thank you.